This is the Attraction Factor with Pam Thomas on Empower Radio. 30 minutes to supercharge your life, move past negativity, and reclaim your personal power. Now, here's your host, Pam Thomas on Empower Radio. Welcome to the Attraction Factor. It's so great to be with all of you again this week. Today, we are all in for a real treat as my dear friend, colleague, and show host of the Empower Radio Show, Simple Steps Real Change, Cheryl Maloney, is back on the show with me. And Cheryl and I are going to be discussing the topic of starting over and ways to handle the unknown and the overwhelm that sometimes sets in when we find ourselves in that position of having to start over whether that's in a relationship, career, or any other area of our lives. But before we dive into today's topic, let's chat briefly about our attraction factor tip of the week, and that's Ollie Ollie Oxen Free. You know, as a child, if you ever played hide and seek, you'll probably remember having picked a hiding place that was rather concealed from others. That was the whole point, to be concealed and hard to find. Well, when we hide from challenges, from our dreams, from potential risks, the good ones that is, that is what we're doing. We're concealing ourselves, not only from others, but from life and our authentic selves. Life is passing us by and opportunities are just floating adrift. So let me ask you, what does hiding get you? Do you have more or less or more to gain, more to lose by not hiding? My wish for you is to think about those questions, to think long and hard about them. Yes, putting yourself out there may feel risky and even scary, but in doing so, you become available to potentials. Potentials to gain what you want, to learn, to grow. Potentials that would not have presented themselves because you were hiding and they couldn't find you. So, Ali Ali oxen free, you can come out now. Take the chance, step out from the hiding place, take that challenge because you have more to gain by no longer hiding than you do to lose. And now it's my pleasure to introduce to you my dear friend and past guest here on The Attraction Factor, Cheryl Maloney. Cheryl is a speaker, she's a coach, and as I mentioned, she's the radio talk show host of Simple Steps Real Change with co-host Kenny Brixie right here on Empower Radio, which airs Tuesday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 5 p.m. Pacific Time, so tune in this evening. Um, She's created Simple Steps Real Change, the website and a Facebook page, as a safe harbor where beliefs are respected, inspiration is shared, and those who come know that they are not alone in their journeys. Cheryl's most recent book, Simple Steps for for Real Life, reached number one bestseller on Balbella Press. And she's the author of Simple Steps Real Change, the book, and recently published Simple Inspirations, a collection of quotes paired with her husband and photographer Jack Maloney's beautiful, beautiful botanical images. Cheryl's career also includes nearly 25 years as an insurance professional, and she left the corporate world when her company was acquired and her position replaced. So she knows the topic of starting over really well, because starting over again in her 50s, both professionally and financially, she is now able to help individuals experience significant change in their lives by design or circumstances. Cheryl, I have to tell you, it is such an honor to have you back on the show and to have this chance to discuss such a powerful topic starting over. Thank you for being here. Oh, Pam, thanks for having me. I sat there and just listened to all you said, and it's like, that's pretty much the way my life's become. Thank you very much for that nice introduction. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. I know, you know, you and I've had a lot of opportunity to connect off air and even on air. And I know you're really passionate about helping others to start over. Um, Would you mind sharing with us why this area is so important to you? Oh, you bet. And thanks for asking. I think because I had started over with almost everything in my life when I hit my 50s. I jokingly say those old psychology um, stressors, those 300 point stressors, I had so many piled up on top of me that there wasn't a way to get back up. Mm Because as you mentioned, I start over when my company was acquired and left the corporate world after 25 years. And Financially, I'd taken everything that was in my retirement package and invested it only to lose it. 
I've dealt with my husband who's had leukemia and cancer, and he's healthy right now. Thank it, thanks everyone, because I know that's a first concern. Yeah, and absolutely. then I ended up, ended up being the primary caregiver for my mother when my father died suddenly. So I had all these things that were like, now what do I do? I'm not prepared for these. So I truly was starting all over, and it was very hard. And I had to say, I can't be the only one going through this. So how can I help others? Mm. And, you know, as I was thinking about it, wow, you know, what uh, an immense, immense amount and tremendous amount, if I could get the words out today, <laughs> of strength that must have taken. And I, I just want to acknowledge you for that because, you know, just listening to that, I, I, I'm thinking to myself, uh, that's a lot to handle. And, and even at the best of times, that's a lot to handle and, and could cause us to buckle, you know. So, well. And that's exa- that's exactly what happened because I I don't live in a world where everything's rosy, but mm-hmm. I also mm-hmm. believe that when we are ready to make a choice to get out of what I call the black hole, because mm-hmm. that's what it really feels like those days when I didn't want to get out from underneath the covers. But I also knew that life was too short and I was living my life. You were talking about being hidden and being yeah. concealed. And I was letting life pass me by. Because I was so overwhelmed and I realized that the only way to get out of that was to do it simply. Mm -hmm. And that was how we came up with Simple Steps Real Change. It's like, what one thing can I do today to feel a little bit better? And if I can just do that one thing and focus on it, then by tomorrow or maybe next week, I feel able to take another step. And a little at a time is what I tell everyone who's starting over. It doesn't matter if it's a marriage, if it's financially, if it's a new job. Don't be in a hurry to just get it all done now because that's when you're going to set yourself up to fail or you're going to set yourself up to be even more overwhelmed than you were when whatever happened, happened. Oh, boy, do I know that one uh, really, really, really yeah. well. As I posted on Facebook yesterday, patience was not a gene I was born with. No. <laughs> so doing things in simple steps was not something I was accustomed to. It was either do it big and do it now or don't do it at all. So I'm I'm right there with you, right there with you. Well, and Go didn't ahead. we find that in the course of doing that, because it's almost a control thing. Got to get it done. Mm-hmm. Got to do it mm-hmm. now. I'm in control and therefore because I'm in control, everything will go the way I wanted it to. But it doesn't always happen. And when it doesn't, then you sit there and go, well, what just happened? Yeah. What did I do and wrong? <laughs> we're not. And that's just it. You go to what, what did you do wrong as opposed to what did you do right? Mm-hmm. And you're so overwhelmed by what didn't work, especially for those of us like you. we We've run our lives. We were in control. We were on our way to the top. Mm-hmm. Okay, what happened mm-hmm. to that bottom? It fell mm-hmm. out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's interesting, too, because I've said this before. Sometimes sitting on the bottom is not necessarily the worst place to sit. It may feel like it at the time. Um, but sometimes it's it's not the worst place to sit. Sometimes it provides us with a different vantage point yes. to be able to see things if we can from a different perspective and then make the choice to, of course, decide, okay, now all I have is up. How do I want to get up from here? Well, and Pam, I think that's a great point because you do look at things differently. Once you've lost it all and you're starting over, all of a sudden the things that used to matter don't matter as mm-hmm. much anymore. Mm-hmm. So you start to appreciate the things that do matter. And, you know, in my case, Everything happened about the time when Jack was getting sick, and we were going through quite a challenge with his cancer and radiation and surgery and all those kind of things. Well, all the other stuff that had happened, the losing the job, losing every dime I had financially, literally starting as if I was walking out of college. Oh, wait, I didn't have a job then either. But you (laughs) get to realize what's important, and the only thing that mattered was his health. Mm -hmm. So the rest of it that had really buried me in my mind, all of a sudden it didn't matter anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you make a good point because when you're down at that vantage point, you're at the bottom. That's normally rock bottom. So that's and you've heard this. It's a great place to push off from. If you choose to do it by intent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we just need to sit there for a while. Absolutely, you know, and just that be. is okay. Yeah, and give yes. ourselves permission to sit at rock bottom for a little while, you know, and well, build up the strength. And being 
gives you the opportunity and, and just to sit there and think, all right, I'm here. I don't have to do anything. Mm-hmm. And I'll tell people this all the time. You don't have to take a simple step at all. Mm-mm. Just stay there, as you say, and be, and then decide what you want your next step to be, as opposed to going on autopilot, which so many of us lived our lives on autopilot. We did what we thought we should or what was expected of us. Yeah. Instead of what, what we want to do, now's the chance to do it your way. You bet. You bet. And you make a great point, Cheryl, about just being, you know, rather than being on autopilot, because when we're just being first and foremost, you know, we're, we're really being very present with ourselves and our circumstances. Whereas on autopilot, we're kind of, you know, breezing. I don't want to say breezing because that makes it sound light and trivial and it's not, but we, we, we're just going and we're not really paying attention to what's going on around us. And, you know, I say this a lot and I know people are probably still tired of hearing it but you know from that awareness that we create and just being we're creating those opportunities and those choices and very true and i see i like when you say that because i think that makes such a strong point is we can and i like breeze through life because you breeze through life but you don't pay attention to anything that's going on around you Mm -hmm. and then at some Mm -hmm. point you stop and go what just happened you know what happened Where's the last 10, 20, 40 years being so many women, and especially women that I deal with, get, yeah. their kids are gone, you know, all of a sudden, maybe their spouse are gone, or maybe their job is gone, and all of a sudden, they sit there and go, what just happened? Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, speaking of, you mentioned the women that you work with, I know... Um, you recently surveyed some of your subscribers, and I know you've done a lot of work in this area, so you've met with a lot of different people. When it comes to starting over, in what areas of life do you see people starting over in most? You know, it was interesting when I did this, and, and when we first talked, the numbers have changed just a little bit. Mm-hmm. But I'm finding that primarily what people are dealing with is starting over financially and mm-hmm. starting over in a career again. Because mm-hmm. the workforce, the workplace has changed so much that all of a sudden it seems to be that as people thought they were going to be retiring, they're in their late 40s, 50s, 60s, and they're looking at, I should be able to retire. All of a sudden their job has gone away or they're the sole breadwinner or maybe the own, only breadwinner because life has changed. And that seems to be the biggest course or biggest concern is what do I do now? I'm starting over and I don't know how to support myself or yeah. I've got a job, but I don't know if I can make ends meet. Yeah. And that ties in very directly with a, uh, the next, probably the most concerning one is people are dealing with these things alone again, whether the spouse died, whether it was a divorce, maybe they were single parent all alone, but now the kids are out of the house and they're just themselves again. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about it before. It's like they've never just been, they've never done thing directly by their own intent. They've just been on autopilot. Yeah, you bet. You bet. And, you know, when we were talking about the very beginning of the show, you were sharing your personal story. You and I both know when when it comes to starting over, that sometimes comes with an immense amount of overwhelm. How can our listeners who are starting over as we speak do so in a way that is less overwhelming? The first thing, and to me, absolutely the most important thing to remember is when you're starting over, It's an event in your life. It's a moment. Mm -hmm. It's not a catastrophe, although it could feel that way. I know what I went through felt like a catastrophe. But if you realize this is just a moment in time and it's going to pass, you can add a little bit of perspective to the overwhelm that you're feeling and go, okay, wait a second. If I just understand this is a moment and it's not always going to be this way. I get to choose how it is going forward. You put it in its place. I know when I was going through primarily the hardest thing for me was going through the financial devastation because this was prior to Jack getting sick Mm -hmm. and everything around me was just the world's collapsing. You know, I'm never going to be able to make ends meet. How am I going to buy a house? How am I going to keep a house? How am I going to pay for? And that, because it's security needs, that's your your security, Mm -hmm. just is oppressive. But if you stop and you realize this is just a moment, 
And Jack actually gave me one of the best ideas that I use now all the time. And it's like when you're feeling that you're really struggling and you're railing and you're you're literally fighting with yourself is to just stop. And as hard as that may sound, just stop and picture all of that weight that's on your shoulders falling off. And you're really good at this, Pam. You're really good at this visualization. You let that fall to the floor, and you see it in a heap, and you kick it out of your way. Just kick (laughs) it to the curb. That visualization is absolutely Mm -hmm. powerful because when you realize you've stopped struggling, all of a sudden, you have this capacity to think clear Yeah, because it's not wasted in the churn and the drama. Mm. I didn't didn't earn my steel toed boots for nothing. <laughs> That's for sure. You. you know, very good advice too. Very good advice. I I want to jump back to something you said just a, a few moments ago when you were talking about the people who you you've come across that are starting over in the areas that they're starting over most. And one of the things you mentioned was divorce or death and being on your own or having children leave. What advice would you give someone who's starting over after experiencing that loss? of a partner or, or, you know, the moving on of children. I, I take this from the grieving process, whether people have left the house or died, you're Mm -hmm. still going through a grieving process and every single person grieves differently. So to me, the most important thing a person can do at that time is to feel their grief allow themselves to feel the grief, the loss, because it's not going to go away overnight. And if you soldier on as if nothing has happened at all, because you have to be strong and you just have to move forward, it's going to come back to haunt you again in the future. And normally when you don't need it. So if you take the time and be kind to yourself and allow yourself to feel that grief, You'll realize it's not going to be long before you decide, okay, I've got to come up for air. Mm -hmm. It's time enough to come to new normal. And that's what I call it is a new normal life. But allow yourself to grieve first. And when you're ready to come out of that, then we go back to that B state. B and decide how you want this to look and be going forward. So really, in all honesty, and and I love what you're saying, you know, giving yourself that permission to feel your feelings through so that they're not festering and coming out in different ways or infiltrating and contaminating your new way of being. Because in essence, what I'm hearing you say is we get to start over with a with a fresh slate. And it is fresh. And sometimes and oftentimes, especially if someone has gone through an unexpected death, death at all is hard, or a divorce that they weren't expecting, they're going, wait a second, I want it to be like it was before they were gone. And that's a very difficult thing to deal with. But Mm -hmm. the truth of what you're living in is they are gone. And you can't go back to that place. But you can celebrate the memories, you can celebrate the times that were wonderful, and then Mm -hmm. decide, okay, I am here by myself because this was meant to be, and I'm a firm believer that things happen for a reason. I'm here because I'm meant to be. How do I do this now? And I'll use an example from my own life, and that was my father dying suddenly. Mm -hmm. And my mother's blind. She had never lived on her own in her entire life. And the shock to all of us, as you can imagine, it's like, how do I care for this woman who's blind? I've never done this in my life either. And we moved right after that. And she lives in an independent living center here in um, outside of Portland, Oregon. And she tells me now she's never been happier in all of her life, including the 58 years she was married to my dad. So you, you realize that it can be better if you choose to allow it to be better. Mm, mm. You know, and that brings up uh, something in terms of the allowing piece. What do you find hinders people most when it comes to starting over? To me, what I see is they don't believe they deserve to be happy. Mm, right. Because they've gone through the fall. Um, 
maybe more than one fall, they've lost their job financially, whatever the case may be, their spouse left, okay, now I've got this job that's miserable. They've got all these things that have happened that are negative. They believe they don't deserve to be happy. And that's exactly the opposite of how they should feel. And now the shoulds are a horrible thing. Yes. Because we try to tell people what they should and shouldn't do isn't a good thing, mm-hmm. but every single person deserves to be happy. It's not a should or shouldn't. It's mm-hmm. a, this is your life. Your life means you deserve to be happy because yeah. you are. Yeah, you, and, and that's very, very true. And, you know, I, I don't know if you've bumped up against this, but I've, I've noticed, too, a lot of guilt and shame involved. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah, amazing. And the big key with this one, and as someone who's come through that, because I've gone through the lost the job after 25 years, okay, starting over without a dime and yeah. everything that went along with it, is there is a lot of guilt and shame. But mm-hmm. the one thing that I keep remembering, and I try to get people to focus on as much as possible, is you did a lot of really good things in the past. This event or these events don't define you. Unless you allow them to. Yeah. And I know I did for myself for a while until I realized I'm stronger now as a person than I ever was before. And it's because of what I went through. I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy, but I know that I'm stronger now than I was before I went through those events. Mm -hmm. And everyone that goes through a challenge comes out of it with knowledge, with wisdom. They could have not have gotten any other way but this way yeah not that we wish those on people absolutely absolutely you know even the toughest situations are opportunities for new learning and new growth and a new way of being and you know when we were talking about guilt and shame just a moment ago I was reminded I have a favorite author and researcher her name's Brene Brown and she does a lot of talks on uh, for Ted Um, and she she basically said in one of her speeches guilt is I did something wrong. Shame is I am wrong or I am a mistake. And I don't think any of us are are mistakes. Absolutely not. I agree with you. What what a powerful thought process that is. Yeah. It's it to me and it it equates the same thing. I may not have had my finest hours, Mm -hmm. but I'm not going to be ashamed by what I've come (laughs) through because it's made me the person that I am right now. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and I think and I think that's something to to recognize and also something to when you get out of that rock bottom place, something to be able to say, look what I did and to really take the time to celebrate. As you as you know, you and I've had many discussions about this. I'm the queen of celebration, love to celebrate, we'll celebrate anything <laughs> because it's an important part of fueling and motivating us to continue to move forward and not stay in that black hole as you said. Absolutely. And when you celebrate and you are the queen of this, you celebrate (laughs) even the small things Mm. because any step forward, anything that has gotten you to a little bit better place, I don't care if it's you were able to, you know, butt your own blouse today when you hadn't been able to do that yesterday because you didn't even feel like getting dressed. Celebrate the fact that you put on a shirt today. You betcha. Absolutely. I know we're nearing close to the end of the show, but I'm I'm curious, what final thoughts would you would you share with our listeners when it comes to this wonderful topic? I think that what I always remind myself of and try and remind others is starting over is truly not a step back. It's a step forward and it's a step to create your life by design Mm -hmm. and no matter how hard it is right at this given moment that moment's going to pass and you're going to come through it and go I'm happier now than I've ever been because I choose to do what I'm doing now as opposed to had to so give yourself the opportunity to live life by your own design Oh, beautiful words. And, and really, in all honesty, what, the, what, that, what came up for me as you were sharing that was taking our personal power back from whatever it is that we're starting over around, as opposed to allowing it to run our lives and, and completely take over. And realize how powerful we truly are. Oh, gosh, yes. Oh, gosh, yes. And if we don't know that, there are people out there such as Cheryl Maloney who can remind you of that. <laughs> so having said that, how can how can people get in touch with you? 
You bet. Well, the website is www.simplestepsrealchange.com or on Facebook, it's Simple Steps Real Change. And I am an open book. And for anyone that wants to reach me, it's Cheryl with a C at simplestepsrealchange.com. And I am happy to talk to anyone who's starting over, maybe Mm -hmm. wants to be part of our projects going forward on starting over later in life. I love it. I love it. Oh, and let's not forget, they can listen to you every Tuesday night here on Empower Radio at Simple Steps Real Change, uh, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 5 p.m. Pacific. So it's awesome. Thank you. Well, no, thank you, my dear. And as you probably heard, my dog is in total agreement with what you were talking about and is giving you a uh, pause up. So (laughs) thanks so much for being here tonight. Cheryl, I really appreciate it. And uh, I want to thank our wonderful producer, Nate, uh, once again for bringing this show to the Internet Airwaves and working his magic. And to all of you, thank you for being here and for tuning in. Until next week, please be well and keep amping up your attraction factor. 